Once again, welcome to our debate Friday. Tonight, our the debate is on the George We Are Step Down campaign. There are people who are calling for the president to step down. In fact, a demonstration is in the making to call for President George We Are to step down on based on various reasons. So tonight we're going to be having a debate on the George We Are Step Down campaign. And um, with me to discuss that, we have Mr. Morris Mann, who is joining us from the state of Minnesota. Morris, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Welcome, my dear brother. Thank you. Also from uh, the state of Minnesota, I have Mr. Benjamin Jonah. Ben, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Last but not the least is Mr. Macaulay Wule, who is also joining us from the state of Minnesota. Welcome, we focus on Liberia, Mr. Wule. Thank you, Mr. Ja. All right. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. We are still waiting for one more guest to come in. Tonight, the topic is uh, debating for or against the George We Are Step Down campaign. And at this time, I'm going to ask my uh, guests to introduce themselves and tell us briefly where they stand on this issue. I start with you, Mr. Morris Mann. Okay, first I want to say hi to all our listening audience. My name is Morris Mann, I'm president of Minnesota and Institution. And for me, my position on the proposition from the campaign of, for me, it's not necessary, it's not in the interest of the peace that we fought for. We pay hard price for the peace we have today. We didn't get the peace on a silver platter. We shared blood, we shared sweat, and we lost many things to get to where we are today. So for certain Liberians to, to keep offering the argument of asking president to step down, I think it's not necessary and it's in no way and intent to benefit the already struggling masses that will all want to change their lives. So, so Mr. Morris, uh, I just want to, uh, yes or no, you are, you are against the We Are Step Down campaign. Yeah, I'm totally against it because it's not in the interest of the country. Okay. We'll come to your reason later. I will go to our next guest, Mr. Wule, to introduce himself and state his position on the step down campaign. Well, uh, Mr. Jai, like you said, I'm a colleague, uh, C. Wule, a son of Liberia from uh, Dudwake and Sano County. And I uh, a resident right now of Minnesota, United States. I, work in Liberia in the revenue sector uh, as uh, uh, I ran a clearing forwarding firm for many years there. I also was fortunate to work at the national legislature as a, a research person. And uh, I uh, served the Congress for Democratic Change uh, also, and then uh, came to the US. Currently I work here uh, for a company in the US as a senior robotic uh, technician, a Fortune 500 company. And uh, I love Liberia. My position is very clear. I feel that the We Are Step Down campaign is not in the interest of the Liberian people. It's uh, anti-peace, it's anti-democratic. And uh, I hope uh, we as Liberians can have heated exchanges for of anything that will undermine the sacrifices and they lost, they lost lives of over 250,000 of our fellow compatriots. Thank you, Mr. Wiles. So you also against the We Are Step Down campaign? Yes, sir. Let me go to my next guest, Mr. Benjamin Jonah. Ben, <clears throat> please introduce yourself and where you stand on the We Are Step Down campaign. My name is Benjamin Jonah. As you rightly said, I am a resident of Minnesota. And I am one of those who have said time after numbers that it makes no sense that we will have to remove uh, a 
a legitimate president by means of a protest or in any way that is not constitutional. And based on that, why I do not support the government in any form of shift, I think it would be the biggest mistake that we as librarians can ever make to set such precedents. And that is why I'm against any form of protest in our country. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to make this clear that uh, we reach out to people who we know have been uh, campaigning for the step down of President Weir, but they were either or not available, they never had the chance, or they did not respond to our call. We've contacted uh, members of the We Are Never We Are movement in the uh, name of Chief Colley and Mr. David Kapli. They were not available. Chief Colley was is at work, and David wanted is not available today. We also contacted Mr. Edward Doe, but he has call, so he couldn't be here. We uh, send messages out to Mr. Chris Marsili, who is also in favor of the uh, step down campaign. He did not respond to our Facebook messages, even though he read them as we could see from Facebook. We reached out also to Pazawie, who has uh, called on 30,000 plus Liberians to get in the street on December 30 to call for the president to step down. So. None of those people is available. There was another person or uh, for the end massacre who reached out to us from Liberia, uh, secretary of the youth wing of COP, he introduced himself, who was supposed to be here to argue in favor of the We Are Step Down campaign. But unfortunately, Mr. Fode massacre is not here tonight. As a result, we have uh, recruited someone to if not place the devil advocate, but also to argue in favor. And that person will be joining us shortly. And uh, we'll be posting the uh, Facebook, we'll be posting our conference call number very quickly. In fact, uh, before I even get to that, our guests reached out to one of the proponents of the We Are Step Down campaign to join. And uh, probably he may be joining via phone call, but we still don't have him. So it is not intentional, it is not deliberate on the part of Focus on Liberia to have only those that are against the step down campaign. We have made frantic efforts to reach out to those who support it, but unfortunately because of one reason or the other, they couldn't be here. So we're gonna be posting the number if you are against it and you want to argue with these gentlemen, please feel free to do so. So once again, gentlemen, welcome to Focus on Liberia. I want to give each of you the chance to state the reason why you are against the step down campaign. And if one person already stated what you're about to say, please do not repeat so that we can have more time for the discussion tonight. Let me start with you, Mr. Wola. Why is it that you are against the We Are Step Down campaign? Oh, thank you, Mr. Jai, uh, for such uh, honorable opportunity. Uh, Quickly, you know, I really wish we had, I, I understand you try your best. I really wish we had somebody that could come and probably convince or, or convince your listening audience on a, a contrary view tonight. But basically, Mr. Jai, we all know Liberia history. Our history is kind of a rich when it comes to how we, uh, 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 how we, the results we get for protests and, and, and you name it. And more beyond that, uh, Liberia has not really enjoyed democracy in our in our existence. It is actually since 2004, 2005, when we had the first elections that brought Madame Salif. That is the first actual democratic experience of Liberia. When we talk about all of the tenets, meeting all of the criteria for democratic elections, you know, and we had the Maraseli era came 12 years, sustained peace. And George Weah is our first democratic transition we have had held in our country history. So look, we can debate on the merits and demerits of all of George Weah's uh, policies and stuff like that. If you don't like a policy, you can come and we can have these, uh, uh, we can have such discussions, you know, disagree, agree, move forward in the interest of Liberia. But to undermine 
over 62 percent of the people turned out to support a, a vote for george weir in the second round to use your dissatisfaction to overturn what 62 percent of the country chose in 2017 december is unfortunate i think it, it, will, it will undermine our peace look i respect the constitution the constitution is very clear the Constitution says in uh, 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 Article 1, all power is inherent in the people. So the people, that power, the people have, have exercised that power through the elections of 2017. And George, we are God, 62% of those uh, uh, of the votes that we uh, uh, counted. If you want, George, we are to give way, you got to exercise restraint. But to say you were a mobilized people, to protest and get George we are out of power at a, 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 a premature time, I think that is anti-democratic. And our country that we have thousands of people who are still suffering from trauma of the war. We have a very tough economic situation in the country. Our people right now, things are not too okay with them. To revert to such anti-democratic exercises could lead into something that would be very unfortunate for us. You know, it could lead to the loss of life, it could lead to destruction. And George Weah is a very popular uh, uh, president. We are there, we are in our millions. We have been supporting George Weah for many years. The truth is we're not going to sit idle and watch people think they can come and overturn our decision. It's not going to happen. It's going to be something that uh, I think if they mean well for Liberia, I, I, I encourage them to continue to pressure the government in so many ways. We saw what happened. George Weah government have increased the bar in terms of democracy and human rights, the respect of the rule of law. We saw the June 7 protests. In fact, I listened to the American ambassador the last time commending the Liberal National Police. That is the first time in my reading of history and my existence in Liberia for the people to uh, 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 express and come out to exercise their democratic right against the government. And they were protected, they were fed, they were provided uh, water during that protest. That, that speaks that, volume that, about you, what we are enjoying right now. And nobody should do anything on the contrary to undermine that. Thank you. Let me go to you, Mr. Jonah. Why are you against this thing? Yeah. First of all, before I can state my point, I want to make it categorically claim that I do not support the We Are government in any form or shape. But that being said, this is the reason why I'm against any form of protest. The first thing when it comes to the removal of any president in our country, there are three major ways in which you can remove a president. One is through impeachment. One has to be it's out of death. And the other one has to be out of the president is incapacitated. Anything other, other than those three, is unconstitutional. One, I have always heard, uh, I mean, people have been saying over and over that, uh, that the constitution says in, we the people, we the people. And I think sometimes we turn to, to make some mistakes when we refer to that we, thinking that every individual in Liberia have that voice. No, Liberia we have, or constitutional democracy and in a constitutional democracy you have representation so those who we have in those houses are the people who speak for us so when the constitution says we the people it is referring to those people who are representing us the 4.5 million of us cannot make a decision that would be a banana nation so people need to understand when the, when the constitution says, we the people, it's not referring to every individual in Liberia will say, oh, I want to, to change the system. If you want to change the system, you have to go with the legislature. That's how the constitution, I mean, that's how it is. And that's, and that's what we need, need to go by. And, and to add to that, Africa itself has not had a, a good history when it comes to protests. The recent protests that, that we have seen have, have, uh, have been with regards to the Arab Spring and all of these protests that have happened in Africa. When you go back to these protests that have happened over these times, look at where the countries are now and where they were before, you can see that they are worse 
than the web. I mean, be, before the the protest. So, with with all of those histories that I have been tracking, it is not in the good interest of the people of Liberia that we have people coming to overthrow a legitimate government. Moreover, those who are perpetrating this uh, this this new protest are people who were in the opposition before. So they themselves do not even have clean hands. Had it been people, other people who had clean hands, probably some of us would have, I mean, given them some, some freedom. But the fact that these guys are the same people who were defeated in the past election, I don't think I can, I can give them any, any, any credence to come in there or remove a legitimate government. And that is the reason why I'm totally against any form of uh, protest in our country now. Thank you. And we'll come back to ask you a question. I'm taking down notes. Let me go to you, Mr. Morris Mad, why you are against the uh, We Are Step Down campaign. OK. Um, for me, I am a student of finance. And I come from school of business and accounting. And I try to look at the cost and benefit of protest. Okay. Judging from history, it will, it will match the cost and benefit. Because as people that have mm -hmm. suffered for a very long time, need to think on the past when they're making decisions. And when you're making decisions, you weigh the cost and benefit of your decision. When I made the decision, what will it cost me? What will be the benefit? If you see that the benefit of your decision is more than the cost, then it's a decision worth taking. But if you see that the, the cost of the decision is more than the benefit, then it's not a decision worth taking. Then, you see that you're striking a bad, you're striking at the bottom, you're looking at, you're striking the loss. It's not even a break even, that'll be a loss. I'm not talking about business, that's why I'm using business term terminology. If you look at the cost of protest, cost of protest, because the government was elected by the popular majority, and they signed a social contract. And for the government to fulfill that contract, government need to mobilize the adequate resources to, to respond to that contract. Because if you have a contract, the contract, they are source of income. Where are you going to get the money for to fund the contract? The people are like, give your son or contract with the government to provide basic social services. Those social services come with cost screens. And you can tell me for government to build a hospital or improve the education system, it requires money. What's the source of income? A government major source of income is revenue, taxes. If, if, a, if an environment is created that undermines the potential for government to mobilize revenue, then who undermining the contract? Because the citizens themselves, you already signed a contract with me to build your house. Like, let me just make a, make a, make a draw a scenario here. You signed a contract with me to build a house. And the source of income is as a result of your effort to cooperate a certain level for me to raise the necessary money to, 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 to carry on our structure. But if you that, that, that sign this contract starts to start to create distraction, try to undermine my ability to mobilize the resources, then who is to be blamed? Who takes the responsibility? So Liberians should know that protesting, if you, if you want to move the government that you already have a contract, to provide social, basic social services for you, then why you complain today that the country is high? Because if you undermine government ability to mobilize resources, to mobilize resources, it means that government will be incapacitated to, 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 to improve the educational system, to improve the, 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 the health system, and to improve the, 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 the overall uh, uh, survivability of the Liberian people. So I don't, I, I don't get it. Why people to, to want to even create and, and give rise to the kind of idea or the kind of conversation in the already struggling economy. Liberia is experiencing serious recession. And to, to, to recover from the recession, it needs a collective effort of everybody. 
the economy of Liberia, the, the economic system of Liberia was, was built on a weak foundation. Liberia, Liberia has a structural economic system. No, we don't have it. We don't have a structural economic system. We've been doing cut and paste around here. There is no, we, have, we don't have no, we don't have no structural education, uh, economic system in place that will say, okay, because of recession, like what, what happened in America, America already has a structure. Without the okay. labor, there is no structure. So anything that goes wrong, that undermines the ability for government to mobilize revenue, it will be at the expense of the very people that are part of the, the social contract with the government. So it's not necessary. <clears throat> we saw the consequences in, you know, in the past, what happened in the past? That's why people have the right to, to exercise their the, the, the right you know, to speak to, to that leader of our thing. It should be done constructively. We should, we should, we should, we should calculate the cost benefit accurately and know how we prefer those propositions. Thank, because on the contrary, you. we'll be hurting ourselves. Thank you. So uh, we want to introduce our. Uh, new guests who have just joined us, Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones. Mr. Jones is a uh, part of the uh, Economic Forum. He's here tonight, Mr. Jones. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Well, thank you very much, Dennis, and a, a big uh, welcome and thanks to all the, uh, the rest of the panel the list. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, now we now we are hearing you, your voice. Okay, not... well, I'll just say again, thank you for you know it's a pleasure and honor to be here. It's still not coming through. Okay, we, we got you. Thank you so it's much. Tip. Okay. All right. Th thank you. Even though okay. it's sticking, but it gets better as we go. So, Mr. Jones uh, is here, but before we go to Mr. Jones, I just want to get from uh, Mr. Man, Mr. Wule, and Mr. Jonah. Okay. Is it, are you against protesting or you are against protesting for the president to come down, I to am, step down? I, I am against protesting for the president to step down. Uh, uh, oh. For me, what are the press, what a protest for the president to step down or not, I'm totally against protest because it will undermine the fragile economy that we try to what build. Mr. Mr. Willard, I just want to get that clear. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Ja, I am I am not against protest. Uh, protest is protects is protected in our constitution, and uh, I don't think anybody should be uh, uh, stopped from protesting. All we uh, demand is that you should do it in a uh, orderly and uh, a peaceful manner. I will support pro uh, protest anytime, any day, once it is peacefully done. But I am against a protest calling for. The, uh, for, for the removal of the president that was elected by over 62% of our people. Okay. Now you guys are here and said you are against it. We have brought Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones. Mr. Jones, what is your position? Mr. Jones. Okay. Uh, uh, First of all, let me just make it very clear that I, I, I enjoy the you, you are breaking in. Society. You are breaking in. Hello. Yeah, you, you are, the internet is, your internet is not strong. You are breaking in. Probably he can call in maybe. Yeah, if if that continue, then please call in. So let let me go to uh, let me go let me go back to my 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 against panelist, Mr. Mr. Wule. Your concern is the protest is going to overturn the election. Are you suggesting that there should be no under no condition? that the citizens themselves will rise and call for an elected official to step down? No, not at all, not at all, uh, 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 uh. not at all. You know, everything in life is about context. You know, I listen most often, you know, like the guy uh, from Rwanda, Paul Kigame. 
He said, uh, I was listening to a foreign minister the other day on this uh, tough guy from London and uh, the journalist. And she, she answered a question and she said, look, we're going to do things the, re the Rwandan way, things that suit us, things that is workable for us. Democracy is a beautiful thing. But uh, let's be honest. Let's look at what have been what has been the results of democracy upon us. I support in its totality the uh, uh, spices and ingredients of democracy. But Mr. Jai, look at Liberia. Look at where we have come from and where we are today. You know, our people have the right to petition a government for whatever reason. My thing is, and like the other brother, the, the brother that said, I don't, I, I don't want to be re, uh, repetitious, but one point he said that is very significant is, if they feel they are not happy with this government, what they can do is they can petition their legislature to go through impeachment. The president can be impeached, but they say you will get on the street and demand the president that was elected by over 62 percent of our people. M Mr. Wole, so, what, what if people don't have confidence in the legislature? Because what people are saying is, uh, in fact, the opposition figures that are in the uh, in the legislature they are saying that even if you have a dissenting view, your issue does not even get put for on the floor because the speaker is in bed with the president. So that's their issue. You good? So how do they go and petition their legislature? No, no, no. You know, uh, 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 um, Mr. Jai, I work, like I said, I work with legislature. Those, those are just bluff. They are, they are not saying the right thing. Okay. The legislature is such that if you raise an issue and you felt that you it will not put on the floor at this time, you can demand obviously uh, uh, the following session or uh, session after that your 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 issue can be uh, placed on the floor. Okay, there have been a lot of issues from opposition uh, uh, lawmakers, including uh, Representative Yeke Koluba and all that have gone to the the, the, the floor. They have watched some of the sessions and I've heard some of the things from opposition being read. But look, your institution is your institution. What you have is what you have is what you have. We cannot work outside of our institution. You got to find means to trust those institutions. So the very same people went before and they went to that very inst uh, institution and they petitioned our institution. So you cannot work outside of that. What we have is what we have. You either like it and work with it or you hold your peace. Okay, okay. but. We will not encourage anything that will revert the Liberian people to anything that we know our history, man. We're not going to sit there and let our country get into chaos. No okay. way. Let me go to Mr. Jones now and hear his side. Okay, well, thank you. I think everybody can hear me now, correct? M much better. First of all, introduce okay. yourself and what's your side? Okay, so I'm Alex Future Jones, um, and uh, I. The discussion is about water. Um, Mr. Joshua, President Joshua, uh, uh, should resign or not. Again, what I would say this is an academic ex ex exercise for me. Um, you know, it's something that I think people should discuss. Uh, you know, so I decided to take side of why I personally think that in such a case he should resign, and uh, I think on the rest of the panelists uh, are mm -hmm. against it. So hopefully this will be an interesting uh, debate or conversation and uh, we both learn and uh, from each other and we'll both leave from here today maybe uh, more enlightened than when we came. Thank you. So in this academic side, uh, you are arguing for the president to step down. Yes, yes. Please, please go ahead and state your reason why. Well, I only have one reason. Uh, Again, I'm not a politician. I'm not a partisan. Even though I'm wearing Mr. George Vr t-shirt, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I think he brought a lot of pride to Liberia. I think he's a good person. Uh, you know, I, I love his family and what have you. But the issue, the reason why in, in, in such a circumstance, I would say and defend this point is one reason, and that is the economy. Uh, the performance of the economy has been terrible. 
and that's no secret. And when you are at the head as a leader, you as a president, you have three jobs, every, at least in theory. One is security. You must keep your people safe. Uh, the other one is you must uh, foreign relations. You must build alliances and trade and do those things. And the most important of the three is the economy. You must feed your people. You must provide jobs and opportunity for them. So I can't discuss all the other the other the other issues. Of course, are debatable whether or not Mr. Weir has good international relations or not. Uh, I We are, we are having a technical difficulty with Alex's connection. So let me go to you, uh, Mr. Okay, Alex, are you, are you there now? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm clear. Yeah, we, we lost you okay. briefly. Please continue. Okay. So, yeah, so on the security issue and the foreign relations issues, uh, I think it's pretty fair. It's, it's not, it's, it's debatable. But the one issue that is very clear you know, in Liberia is the economy stinks. Okay. There's no way you can massage that. There's no country right now, I think in Africa, the last time I checked, that has a 20 something percent. So when it's up, you know, it, it just don't make sense. There's no way you cannot grow 1%. So how can anyone in a good faith, say, or right, I'm doing a good job, or I have a mandate by the people, mm -hmm. but yet there's no growth. In fact, there's been declined. So that's the point on that one point. I'm not advocating here to remove the president. So Mr. Alexander Cummings or Ben Ayuro or arguing for any opposition. In fact, I think they all are terrible in terms of leadership. Okay, so let's get that very clear. Uh, what I'm saying as a chief exec executive of a country, your primary responsibility is to be able to grow your economy and feed your people. And Mr. Weir has failed so far in that area. And because of that, he himself should look at the numbers and say, you know what? Uh, I'm not doing a good job in this area. All right. So, so are, you, are you saying because the economy is terrible, mm -hmm. so the president should step down? Or is it good for people to get in the street and say, Mr. President, the economy is so terrible, please step down. I think it'd be other way. I think whether people, people go to the streets or the president resigns, it doesn't make a difference to me. Because in Greece, I mean, in, in France, in this very United States, there were revolutions. I mean, the French Revolution, there's in, in China, the Cultural Revolution. So, you know, that area, I'm not an expert, so I can't speak much on it. But what I can say is two things that Mr. Weir has to do. Either fix the economy as quickly as possible or leave. Because his primary job is, you know, that's one of your major jobs. You know, we all have jobs and there's expectations for those jobs. And if you don't meet the job, who are you going to blame? You have to change the front brake, rear brake. Thank you. Now I've been joined by my guest. Ms. Masa Dopo. Masa, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thanks, Danny. Thanks for having me on the show. Sorry, I'm out of, I'm out of form, so, but thanks oh. for having me. Great. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Jonah. Yeah. Your, 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 your major reason here, you said you have three, only three, reasons why the president should step down and yeah. you gave one has impeachment yep. death and the president mm -hmm. being incapacitated according to you everything else is unconstitutional yeah. well our constitution said power is inherent in the people yeah. so if the people that are being governed uh -huh. can get up and say we want the president removed because we don't like it the way it is and uh -huh. we've seen that all over the world even yeah. here in, uh, yeah. in the United yeah. States, we think that what's wrong with people going in the street and saying we are not satisfied with our elected leaders, they either do the right thing or they step aside. Yeah. So, so here is the deal. 
And because something is done all over the world, that doesn't make it right. That's the first thing. Number two here is that when the constitution said, we, the people, again, I'm saying it, it is not, we are 4.5 million people. Are you telling me every Liberian will have to consent to anything that must happen? No, it does not happen. We have a constitutional republic and we have- We call that election. We right. call that election. Right. So we put people into, into, into places who represent our voices. So when we have problem, we go to those people. That's how a democracy works. So when the constitution says we the people, it's not referring to every single one uh, of the 4.5 million people. We will be having a banana republic if that were to ever happen. It's, it's not gonna happen. And that's why the framework of the constitution, they were very smart. They were very smart when they used that we, and that we does not, it, it's not referring to, to, to single Liberian. And uh, fast forward, uh, uh, my brother made mention of, uh, uh, you know, the, I mean, president stepping down. If we must go back to history since 1989 to 1994 mm -hmm. in Africa, when the, uh, I mean, when the issues about presidents and coups and protests was at its peak. We have had about 35 um, countries that did change power because of protests. When we go back to revisit those countries now, where they were proud, proud to the to the time of the pro of, of those those protests, they are even worse than they were. The Arab Spring is a complete as an example. It it speaks for itself. And uh, uh, when you made reference to the speaker, when when he said, "Oh, the, the the speaker is in bed with the president," that's a weak argument. And why is it weak? It's because even in the world, because democracy where we live today, we see the same thing. I mean, once the speaker is from that party, you see they always side with the government. We didn't bring democracy. I mean, on us, these people who themselves. Uh, the brain of democracy, they, they themselves are struggling with it, let alone us who are learning how to, to, um, to, in, to, in, to embrace this new thing called democracy that was even mm -hmm. forced upon us. So we are learning this thing. This is not part of us. So we have to take our own time and do it easy. And okay. again, I'm saying we cannot, because if we set such precedence, when the next president comes in, guess what? When the other people goes goes into uh, goes into uh, opposition, they will also come in and rise up too. Where are we heading, uh, Alex? Yes. What you said to Jonas point? I think the horrible point. I think I think I think the horrible is just saying that you don't want to operate on a patient that is dying because the previous operation did not save the person's life. That's basically what he's saying because you know change in government did not work in Egypt or someplace else. So therefore, we are stuck. And to me, it's a brainless uh, conversation. Why, why, why are we here? All right, what's the solution? Like I said, I'm not against this person or any other president. In fact, anyone who knows me, I have a big disdain for politics. I do not like politics. I never want to go into politics. I do not even like people in politics because it's divisive, including even in America. But we have a country, you need a government. The government has a role to play in, in society. And I just listed three roles. When the government fails to play that role, what is George, George Weah? What is uh, Ellie Johnson Salib? What is Barack Obama? Then the country must move forward beyond that individual. You have a situation with Pope Francis, who in the Catholic Church, right, is considered God's, the Pope is considered like God's representative on earth. No one has any authority. When there was a scandal in the Vatican, with the Vatican Bank, and the church had serious uh, questions over his leadership, what did he do? The Pope stepped down. All right, not Pope Francis now, but the one before him. He stepped down. Did I make him any weaker? Did I, did I change uh, the, in fact, it made the organization greater. So my argument is not for George Weah or against George Weah. What I'm saying 
if you're a CEO of a company, you're mayor of a city, you're president of a country, you have a responsibility. When you fail to do that responsibility, you don't have to sometimes even wait for people to come out and tell you what you're supposed to do. If the economy starts to grow tomorrow and, I, and there's reform and you start to see changes in the government, especially economically, I will be the biggest cheerleader. There won't be an argument to say go in the streets or don't go in the street because you will say that things are moving. You can say all you want about Trump. You can say he's an idiot, that he's racist, but guess what? America works. It's the largest economy in the world. Today, the Dow Jones is the highest uh, in, 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 in history. People are making money. They have retirement. They have jobs. The lowest unemployment rate. So in a bureau case, you can say that we're young democracy. You can say that, oh, let's wait it out. But guess what? Children are, are starving. Mothers are dying. People can't get treatment. So it's not a simple because Okay, let me go to you, Mr. 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 Meng. Be before, before you come in, Mr. Meng talk about cost-benefit analysis. So if you did a cost-benefit analysis, what is it going to cost if, for instance, as Alex is arguing, the economy keeps doing, going down the drain? So per Alex's argument, if the economy is taking a nosedive, that's more costly than the president sensing that and say, well, this is tough. Uh, let me resign because I have failed to uh, resuscitate and revive the economy. So when you talk of cost benefit analysis, the cost of continuing on a downward spiral is even worse. Um, <laughs> my dear brother, don't, don't buy the argument from, from this guy. You know, a lot of people come out and say, oh, the, pres the president is not facing the economy within the facing the economy. But no one, no one has come out to tell you the president needs to do S, Y, and Z to get the economy fixed. In my, in my introductory statement, I said, Liberia has a weak economic foundation. A weak economic foundation. So first, the economy of Liberia, it's not, it's not just like a walk in the park. It's not just a walk in the park. Liberia is depending on Liberia's survivability is heavily dependent on import. Now look at import. We're not producing anything. We don't have farm to market road for 170 some more years. You can't even, you can't even drive from Red Light to Grand Gile. You can't even drive and, and, and to, to the nearer county and, and, and carry any commercial activities. The commercial activities, it's just station in Montserrat, Mark Gibi, Grand Basso County. If, if you do a cut, if you do an analysis of the, 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 the commercial activities within the country, you see that the revenue bracket is very small. The revenue envelope is very small. Then we should ask ourselves, what the cost? Why Liberia, look at Liberia budget. Liberia budget is on a $5 million. Hmm. You know why? I will ask ourselves, why to, after 170 some more years, our national budget still on a $500 some more million. Dollar. For all the natural resources we have, for all the rich, rich forests we have, good lands for agriculture and other things, we all ask ourselves, this government, hmm. this government through her own strategy, they do an analysis and they identify one of the major causes of the, 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 the affecting our economy downward. We don't have time to market rule. Someone said we should invest in agriculture, it will fix the economy. If, how do you move the air equipment to the various locations that, that you'll be carrying a, a, a recorded activity? How? So, so, so listen, in essence, listen to me. Saying... Listen to me. The, the first thing these guys are not taking into consideration is this government, this government, when the government came to power, the government announced that they inherited a broken economy in a broke country. What the government decided to do, what the government decided to do is to what? To prioritize road and uh, road within the country. Government is building roads, farm to market roads. Mm -hmm. As I learned, the, 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 the agreement for the Kornian to Boima Highway is already been consummated. The, the, the agreement, right. yeah, I come in now. Mr. Man, listen to me. I, 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 no, 
I see why, where you're why? going. So I want to... Right. So you were saying the economy is not an issue or Mr. Weah is fixing the economy. So that shouldn't be a problem for anyone calling for him to step down. Oh, yeah, because you're fixing the economy. He's okay, not selling. Alex, Alex, what you say to that? Because men is... Even people He's that are calling for... Yeah. It's even for postures, are, okay? All right. right. And then he should tell me, he should tell me yeah. how, how is, I, I just want to ask you one question. Can I ask you one question? Sure, go ahead. Can I ask you one question? If you were asked today, because you, your <laughs> argument is the president should face the economy. If I ask you today to suggest two ways that the economy can be faced within two years, what would be the two suggestions? Good, good. very good question. As a matter of fact, I've written about it and I've written the president about it. So if you go on, Facebook, you see I not just two stay ways, right in but the at least five right. ways. So one of the ways you do that is you get the best Liberian financial and economic experts together, not your partisan, and let them take some time to study why the currency is falling, to look at all the different areas of, of opportunities, and come up with an economic plan. Number one, the president did not have an economic plan when he came to power. They came up with a poor, poor agenda six months after coming in power. Okay? Uh, so you need to develop an economic plan, that's one. Two, the central bank. Every, every modern economy today relies on the central bank to promote growth. When there's slow growth and unemployment. So the two things to answer your question succinctly, one, is you get a team of the best Liberian finance and economic individuals together. You put them in a house, you lock the doors, you tell them you can eat, you can sleep, but don't leave this place until you come up with a plan to grow the economy to four to five percent in the next six or seven months to come up with a plan where you, 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 you will now be able to pay people. So you haven't even done that. Okay, you had an economic forum of which nothing significant came out of it. If I call it a joke. Then, so then you fix the central bank. You get somebody at the central bank who knows, who understands practical economics, someone who has the experience, someone who knows how to manage the economy. And the people there, I'm sorry to say, they don't understand basic economic principles. So two things he could have done, he can still do those things. Mr. Wule. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Ja, I really hope one day we can uh, arrange something, you know, smaller, maybe where we have two opposing of, of views and, you know, to be, because there are a lot of things first. My brother's statements have been a uh, flaw with, uh, he said that he, he's not, uh, there's no country in Africa that got 26, uh, 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 Correct. Yeah. I said not many countries. Not many countries. Oh, okay. You put a qualifier there now. But uh, I can yeah, tell you. Uh, okay. Thank you. That I, I love the fact you put a qualifier there because I was and ready that's to And that's the list of countries that saw Sudan and yeah, Sudan listen, and Liberia. Yeah, listen, listen. I made progress. Oh, okay, I, you, cool. I, I get it. I get that Thank part you, now. You know. All right. So what you and then there are a lot of double DJs, uh, double DJ inflation across the globe right now. It's not, it's not unique to life, bro. We see what is happening in Chile and this and that. But let's go. The brother talk about economy. I love the question of man asking, what can you recommend that the president can do right now that we take the economy from where in the next two years? And I see you going back into the same issues. Liberia, we have always had dialogue. We have always invited people, experts from opposing views and this and that to come and give their opinion. We have had constraint when it comes to implementing these things. What George uh, Ambassador, we have done, President, we have done a core economic dialogue. That dialogue comprises of people from the opposition, people that contested against him, participated in that dialogue. I don't know what else my brother's expectations are, but uh, the truth here is economic downward trend. You don't just get up today when the economy is going bad, especially on like bureau that have uh, a lot of structural uh, 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 lapses. Uh, we don't even have structures. Let me, let me put it, uh, to, to sim uh, simply put it. We don't have structure. When the economy is going bad, there's not a break that the president or anybody coming in power can just start to uh, press that break and everything start to be better. Nobody, nobody uh, 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 
Nobody, including, I don't know, economists on earth who have taken over Liberia presidency and stop what was happening to Liberia. What was happening to Liberia was predicted when I remember I was staying in Liberia by the IMF, the World Bank, and different, different uh, international body that they projected that if we don't change the way we're doing things, in 2012, I remember the World Bank uh, had a press conference. It said, if Liberia don't change the way we are doing things, when Omeo leave the country, we're going to experience what we're going through. No, it's not, it's, not, it's not a miracle. But what the question is, I don't like the whole issue of shifting blame. Nobody can argue mm -hmm. it and say Liberia never, uh, President, we are never inherited or buy economy. He did. What are the things he's doing? Let me give you, I want to say one day, I hope you can have the discussion where it'll be a two person where we will have the, the sufficient time to lay these facts down. Let's go to the statistics. Most of the people are here to go to World Bank, IMF, and this and that. If George Wright is not doing everything, the very IMF that said we were experiencing uh, 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 0.04 growth, they are predicted by, by 2021, we uh, Liberia growth rate expected to, to increase to 3.4%, which is not where we want it to be, but that's progress, right? And I can, I can tell you that uh, from my own analysis and this and that, it will be far more than that, but that's not an issue. Look at Liberia, when George Riyadh took power, we had less than 10% of the Liberian people having access to electricity. Mr. Jai, as we speak, by next year, next year, March later- All participants are unmuted. Hello? Go ahead. By next year, March, we will have that, that number more than, uh, uh, we will have over 30 to 40% of our people having access to electricity. Before George Riyadh first time finished, Liberia, the people in the Liberians that have access to electricity will increase to more than 50% or, or, or 60% of our population. Okay. That, the way things are going. Beyond that, that goes to the issue of roads. Like my brother said, I don't want to uh, keep repeating things that our previous said, but he talked about the Kodian road. That, that, that deal has been consummated. We talk about the Ganta to Tafeta yeah. road. That deal has been consummated. We talk about fifty million dollars from Ecowas uh, 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 Bank for the road from Grand Coup County to 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 uh, 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 for Sano to Grand Coup, uh, going towards Maryland. These are things that bring economic returns. That go to uh, our education se uh, sector. Mr. Wale, let, let, me, let me let me stop yeah. you. There. I was I was about to go to Jonah because I don't. Let, let me go. Let me take. Let me take one color. Let's see. Yeah, let I rather hope next time we can do this and narrow the, 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 the you know, because I want us to go to the fast, the statistics. No, no, no. Uh, we, we'll, we'll go there. Don't don't worry, because I don't think I don't think uh, Mr. Jonah agree with you when it comes to how well the, the the government is doing. His only issue is whether they are doing good or bad. They shouldn't well, be. In my list is long. I've not even gone through ten percent of my list. I, no, I, I see. I see your list. Hello. I see where you are doing with it. But let me bring in our first caller to just add something to it. Call out your name and where you calling from. Yeah, my name's Monu, and I'm calling from uh, Las Vegas. Uh, speak and, a little uh, louder. Your name again. I the, the name is Monu, and I'm calling from Las Vegas. Uh, your your phone name, please. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your phone name? Yeah, money you draw. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, your question or comment. So can you can you hear me? Yes, sir. No, so basically, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, agree with the previous, you know, uh, some of your panelists with regards to uh, not demonstrating on the cemetery. I think that is just craziness, that's anarchism. George, we are in uh, no way be blamed for what's happening with the Liberian economy. We have to realize that there, there uh, uh, since the Ebola, uh, the Ebola tragedy under President Salif, the economy has been seeing a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. There's an over-reliance on government in Liberia. We are not entrepreneurial. So where it's not like the United States, if the government doesn't, doesn't provide, well, the private sector, there's millions of entrepreneurs here that can do it. In Liberia, entrepreneurship is not part of our culture. So we have a, 
everybody depending on the government. There's not much that we have to do. I mean, we have to, he, he could have come up with some idea that I agree with. Say, for instance, I always say, uh, instead of running to the IMF, <coughs> come up with a diaspora bonds. Okay. Reach out so, to your diaspora in the United States, in uh, Europe, in Asia, Australia. Say, look, here's the situation. Right. We need so, half a billion so dollars. He, 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 we're, we're floating these diaspora bonds for you guys to buy. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing in India. I think we won against did it. Nigeria has done it. That's how you, you know, in the absence, uh, when you have these uh, economic issues, oh, okay. especially when you have a, a, a diaspora like the Liberian diaspora that uh, I think they say a quarter of Liberia's GDP is from the diaspora. Yeah. That means the people are connected. They're interested. So reach out yeah. to them, explain so, what the so situation in essence, is, and look, Ms. I need your in, help. In, in essence, you say Mr. Weir is doing well, and so there's no need to call for him to step down. No, I'm not saying he's doing well. I didn't say that. What okay. I'm saying mm -hmm. is getting in the street, putting, in the, uh, putting people in the street, that gets recklessness. Okay. Just being reckless because... There's no point forward after that to say, okay, <coughs> what will success look like after the, the demonstration? You explain to me if you agree for people to be in the street. What success will look like after the demonstration? Because no, they, not, there won't be a dramatic turnaround of the economy. Huh? No, I there said that's why I'm running the guest. There won't be a direct turnaround of the Latino economy by putting people in the street. Thank you. So it makes no sense. That's, that's a very lazy idea. All right. Thank you. And I, I'm saying any patriotic Liberian like, should support that nonsense that they're talking about getting people in the street on December 30th. All right. Th thank you. Before before thank I you. go to my next call up with the 713, let me go to you, Ben. You, yeah. you don't you don't support the president. I mean, you don't, as you say, you don't. No, I don't. I'm, I, I I mean, I do not support the the president based on some of the, the same reasons that Ellis, I mean, gave. One is the the uh, the academics uh, in our country is so bad, and when this young man uh, took over, he was being I mean he uh, he refused to have audited the I mean the past government. As a result of him not doing that, now that he's having this problem, now he 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 want us to 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 believe that this problem that he's having is from the past government. Why was it you, why was it you, why was it you did not audit them first to, to see where were the shortcomings? And then you come back to the Liberian people, then you, you tell us, so look, look, this is what I met, this is where we are, and, and then from, from here, this is where we are going to go. If he had took the Liberian people on a journey along with him, he would have had much he, he, he would have had things much easier, but instead he did not do it. He just jumped into it and started to run this, this country like, I mean, someone <laughs> running some uh, kind of, a, I mean, ball scout. And now when the car got stuck in, I mean, in the mud, now he wants the Liberian people now to it's come on board. And with all you are explaining, are you saying we should wait for four more years before we can make that change? So, and I will tell you, yes. And the reason is simple. Because when I look around, when I look at the alternative, people who are people who are outside of the bellwind, right now, when I look outside, I don't see anything better than what we have now. So a bird, a bird in the hand, wolf two in the bush. I don't know what is there. Because we were told so many things about this young man. He, that he had all the contacts in the world, he had all the money, and he came, and it was a lie. We were told the same thing about Ellie, how she had uh, all the contacts, and it was a lie. A guy. Hold on, let him finish. So, 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 these things being said, the Liberian people have been fooled on so many times. We, when it comes to people who are well educated, we will call uh, her name El, uh, Ellen Johnson, and that was another flute. When it comes to the country board, we will call George Weir. It's another flute again. So, so then tell me, who, where are we going to look? I'm not in any way trying to downgrade education. 
in any form. But I'm saying right now, this guy, we just need to treat him just like a young baby who is holding a breaking plate. When you run to that baby, you, you know what happens? The baby drops it and everybody loses. So all we can do, just be with him, pet him, pet him, those four years come and we can get him off. But we don't want to, we, we do not want to create a situation where we see oppositions will, will when we go into opposition, they can empower themselves and come and then change a government. That's not what we want. That's what used to happen in Africa during the days of coup d'etat. And if we have left coup d'etat, we, we're not going to turn this new page to <laughs> protest because protest is just another phase of the old coup d'etat now. We don't want that. The God is not good for us, but let us keep him until we get to where we, yes, people will die along the way. Don't get me wrong. People will surely die along the way. But I think we will lose less now than just mm -hmm. destroying everything. Thank you. Mr. Wood, I will come to you. This uh, caller has been waiting for a long time. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? This is Ali Kamara. This is how you doing? Ali Kamara? Yes. Yeah. Okay, talk a little louder. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Maryland. This is Aliyu, Dennis. Okay, Aliyu, your question are coming. Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me just say thank you for the show. It's a very great show. Um, and it's, it's very important to talk about. And I want to thank all the guys in there. Everybody really, really talking some good stuff. And some of us who are the novices of politics and the economy, we're sitting here learning stuff. Uh, I want to say I am one of the admirers of Alex uh, in terms of his financiers and economic intellectualism. But I am hoping that I am not de I mean, uh, deducing that his expose is, is a justification of why uh, something called December 30th should go on. I don't want to think that Mr. Alex Jones is doing that. Uh, this other guy who is in the science of uh, judgment in so many respects, I want to let him know that a growing economy is not determined is not determined by do by donations and borrowing money. A growing economy is is, is determined by the, em the employment rate, by the GDP, you know, by the reduction of inflation. That's how you determine a growing economy, not by collecting, borrowing money to build roads at the end of the day, thereby adding to more burden on the government and the people of Liberia. Uh, but but uh, 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 let me let me get some, some things up here. The protest, it would not make sense. But before I go to the protest, let me just say this. Uh, a lot of people want to put the blame of the economy, current economy on Madame Elias and Salif. Yes, the Trinidad is second. Any economy does not begin immediately from the existing or the current government. Most times, it starts either from from the past government, or any of the past government, because that's when most government becomes reckless when it's time for them to leave offices. They become very reckless, and and as manifested by Ellen Justice's uh, government attitude. However. If you campaign and galvanize and protest and assemble and do all of this for 12 years, impressing upon the Liberian people that you do understand all of the inklings as it relates to, to, to the economy, the politics, and even the social activities of the country, then you cannot take over after 12 years and then put the blame because you already knew. That's why you protested over 80 times. You already knew that. So when you got there, the way to resolve the problem, this is George Weir's blunder. The way to resolve a, stri I mean, a struggling economy is not to bring people on board who have no vision, who have no solution to the problem. And this has been George's problem. The people he hired as his economic team either do not understand the, the today dynamics of, of, of economy, of our economic, uh, or their style, their system is something that was maybe the late 60s and early 70s. Okay. Times have changed. But let me just be emphatic here and say, no, 
protesting in Liberia is violent, in my opinion, in the manner in which it's done. Whenever you protest and you take to the street and your protest is not governed or controlled by the government, especially so the police department, it is a violation. And this is why you see people get beaten, people get hurt. You saw the student situation. The student was, was all over the street. That is not what protest is. <laughs> the, the word protest comes out of the same thing called peaceful assembly. Yes, you have the right to peacefully, to peacefully assemble, but the word, the underlying word is assemble, Thank not you. to march in the streets and march into people's businesses. That's so right. the protest is not necessary. Henry Costa has a complete personal angry dice, man. We know that most of the things that he's doing is based off of vengeance. And I am calling on the uh, government to have yeah. Henry Costa arrested oh, upon okay. his arrival in Liberia yeah. because Liberia can no longer take these kinds of behaviors. But thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. John. Yeah, thank you, Aliu. And uh, Mr. Willie, I promise yeah. to come back to you. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. John. What I want to what I'm getting out there is uh, you can talk about the protest from the colors, but you can't really go and defend the we are government, especially when it comes to the economics. What you say? No, you can defend the we are government if you come with open mind. There's no way as a Liberian I can sit here and say, oh, Liberia, all is okay and this and that. That would be stupidity, you know, to be very honest. The truth of times are hard. But people always say, oh, blame. It's not that when we're discussing these things, we are not blaming or shifting blame so much, but we are only referencing. Mr. John, if I give you $1,000 to build a house and I come and ask you, why the house is not at roof level? The first thing you're going to say, ah, well, you gave me $1,000 above uh, uh, eight dollar fifty cent for bag or semi. I bought hundred bag that was eight hundred fifty dollar. How you expect the house to be at roof level now? My analogy there, uh, why I using this analogy is, I look at the CDC led government and I look at what they got and what they are doing with what they got. That is my thing. CDC led government came to power where even that very month, January of twenty eighteen, as we were going through inauguration. We never had sufficient funds to pay civil servants for that particular month. You can't, you can't brush these things aside. This government came to power. Now, I agree it is the responsibility of the we are government now to change it, but I don't know what people's expectations are. These things are not going to change overnight. It's going to take years for us to recover. It, are they getting better? I'm saying yes, not, they might not be as fast as people's expectations are, but the truth is, Let's go to the data. Let's go to the statistics. When George Weah took power, how we actually like, oh, man, this, over ninety percent of the people in our country were living, were, were living less than five dollars a day. It's not like George Weah took a country that was so good. No, the fact here is, what are those things? How can economy grow when you don't have electricity, you don't have roads, you don't have skilled labor? All of these things are factors that can make uh, uh, for you to experience economic growth. Now, so George, we are government. It's not like he have these things in place and he's not doing nothing. No, so he's trying to put these things in place at the same time. We are addressing the energy uh, situation in our country now. I, like I stated, George, we are took over less than ten percent of the people who have access to electricity. You know what I mean for small businesses across the country if they don't have current. But I am telling you now, by December, we are coming <laughs> up with uh, 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 six different. Uh, 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 transmission sites coming on that we're going to increase our energy generation with the West African Power Pool project. Okay, beyond that, we are building roads like tomorrow. Our people in the rural areas that are in uh, into agriculture can be able to bring their, their market, uh, 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 their, their uh, farm produce to the market. These are things that will take uh, time. The health sector on George we are taking over, it was non existent just the, uh, uh, yesterday. We have our first uh, pathology lab was commissioned in mm -hmm. at the JFK that we're going to be diagnosing people even with cancer and other things and, uh, and making a right prescription for them. In education, today, our, that this going wide, Liberia performed better than uh, previous year prior to this government taking over. Okay, 
So these things, my point here is, I'm not saying things are okay in Liberia. What I am saying is these things take time. Okay. And George, we are government are doing what they are working with, what they have. Like Morris said, Liberia or budget is, is a joke. You, 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 tell, you tell anybody mm -hmm. about our country budget is like fun. What we have out of that budget, over, even doing early time, over 75% were going to uh, recurring expenditure. Okay. So there was no money there for, for any other public sector investment. Is just we are changing the, the dynamics? Yes. That's why I want you, I am appealing to you, like my brother there, he talked about it. I want one of the guys that said, Josh, we are not doing much. Let us have the time. Let us come with the numbers. Okay. I, I, the numbers are there. They don't lie. And what? see where Josh, we are took over where we are and where we are headed. I can yeah. tell you. It yes. will get better, right. but it takes time. Mr. Wallach, get ready next Friday. Let me let me go to Mr. I am and open to that. Let me go to Mr. Man to buttress that before I go to Alex because uh, the caller the caller may I try to say even though he admires you, but on this he's not with you. But let me go to Man uh, first, and then we'll go to our callers. Morris. Yeah. Okay. Um. You see, one thing people not really getting here is what it takes to fix the economy. And where the, this government met the economy. No, Liberia was established in 1847. Go to history. And nobody can tell me since Liberia established, what the first economic system in the package? What kind of economic structure Liberia had? <laughs> Liberia had no structure uh, 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 to, 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 to even build an economy for that country. People ran that country like somebody running with a market. I'm telling you, I used to work at the General Auditing Commission. Liberia as a government never had any accounting system. It was on, on it was through the World Bank under the Ellen Jones administration, Liberia adopted ESA. And Liberia adopted the, P, the, the PFN law was passed. Because to even face the, 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 to even face the economy, the first thing is you put controls in place to mitigate works, to show accountability, and, 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 and strengthen the, 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 the financial management system. Because you want to what, manage money for the intended purposes. Liberia for 70, 170 some more years, there's no road nowhere in the country. And the major things that grow economy, that stimulate the economy, you will have what? Good road nowhere. People are talking about America. America already have the foundation. If even America experienced reception, that what America do, doing the, 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 the bombing on the Twin Tower, the, the, the former president said you can hit the you can hit America, but you cannot hit the foundation. It means that the foundation of the country is solid. But Labrador doesn't have a solid, solid foundation. The foundation of Labrador is very weak. And to, to, to build our economy on a weak foundation is difficult. We all went to school. We still play politics with the teens here. Because, because you look at how, how you grow your economy, the first thing you might have role, you might already expand the, the economic activities. To increase the revenue pack, the, the revenue envelope, okay. to provide those services. We're talking about the health sector. Where the government get money to put in the health sector? Where the government get oh, government get money? The revenue envelope is very small. So if the government, for years we didn't prioritize rule, the government is prioritizing rule and energy. These are the two things that stimulate economic growth. You might have adequate energy to 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 to, to supply the industry. Mm -hmm. So even to even, to even add value to the private sector. If you want to, to, to grow a private sector in Liberia, how do you grow a private sector with all electricity? Mr. Mr. Jones, let me go to you before I go to our call. How do you expand the economy? So okay, so I don't know. Where, I don't know where to start. Okay. I don't. I don't know where to. This is where start you start from. Okay, go ahead. I think okay. you're, you're, okay. you will okay. catch up. The, 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 gentleman, I, I, the gentleman I just speaking, he's talking about building rules, right? What economic study that shows that there's a correlation between the number of rules in your country to GDP growth? I haven't seen it. 
So when people come up and just make this outrageous statement, economic and financial statement, with no solid foundation, with no understanding, it's like going to a dentist and proclaiming you know how to do dentistry because your friend is a dentist. Okay, Ghana has roles for many years. Ghana suffered. Okay, Cote d'Ivoire has roles. Greece has roles. Detroit, Detroit has electricity. Why is Detroit bankrupt? Puerto Rico, they have roles. They have all the all the things that I are seeking to get today. That in a mind that if we get these things, they will equal economic growth. Tell me what. In the United States, have electricity, but go to Detroit today, you can buy a house for five thousand dollars. So, and then let me go to the next gentleman, Mr. Weir, said that he needs more time. Every week on Wednesday, a bunch of Liberians and all non Liberians get together and talk economics, politics. He's welcome to come there any day to either educate us or we can educate him. It's now on Saturday at three o'clock. So maybe he's been somewhere on a rock or something. But we do talk economics. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm here today is to talk mm -hmm. economics. Because most of the people in Liberia who talk in economics, they, these are people who don't even mm -hmm. know how to balance a checkbook, and including the president. The president is not an economist. You don't have to be an economist or a financial analyst to run a country. And I wrote an article about that effect. But you do need to have an economic plan. When Bill Clinton took away in 2003, okay, America was in shambles. When Barack Obama took over, America was in shambles. What, what, what George Bush couldn't do, Obama could do in two, three years? Because he had an economic plan and he had the right people. George Weah does not have an economic plan. If he has one, please show me it. The poverty reduction, the, the way you call poor voting, is a garbage. I don't know who wrote that mess. Okay, it's a pie in the sky to say we should have good, we should invest in education. How are you going to invest in education? How much are you going to put in education? That's a plan. Just saying we want certain things is not a plan. It's like saying I want to make hundred thousand dollars a year for bachelor's degree. I don't want to work. So that's what happening in Liberia today. You don't have an economic plan. Your central, your central bank sucks. I will glance support this government is it can show me a piece of paper that at least will show one to two percent growth. I may look at the seeing things in Liberia and say it's a shit hole. So what, where are you getting your data from to say that when you build roads or when you build a clinic here and then, then things will be okay. You have five million people. If you build a road in from, from Morovia to be what happens to the person in, in, in Nima County or Lofa County or in Grand Grand Cru County, how does that affect that person? Thank, thank so you, people Mr. need Mr. to Mr. seek economic counseling. That's first. Thank you. Uh, before you come in, let me go to my caller, 9786212338. Yes, how you doing, brothers? And uh, this is Papi Flumoye. How you doing? Great, Papi Flumoye, your question or comment? <clears throat> Yeah, I would just, I would just, I would just make a comment, a uh, real quick comment. Um, people who come up with it, whenever you tell people uh, that the government is doing its best, they always come up with this question, which says, and they always ask us, those who support the president. So Liberia today, and Liberia before Georgia came to power, which is better. Do you want to tell us that Liberia is better today than when Georgia came? That's that when Georgia came to power. That's the question they ask every time. And to be very honest, I'm not. I'm not going to miss my word. That's a very stupid question. Of course, of course, Liberia is worse off today than it was when Georgia came to power. Although I support the president, it's worse off today than when Georgia came to power. And that is how it should be. If you think Liberia should be better. Over 18 short months since this president came to power, even though the country was systematically destroyed over the period of 12 to 16 years, I'm adding, including Chancellor time, even though the country was systematically destroyed, and you think that a president or any president who comes to power 
after that, after that 12, 12 to 16 years of systematic destruction, that that president will turn everything around in 18 short months, then I don't think you know what you're talking about. The trajectory of the economy, just before Ellen Johnson left power, about, one, about 18 months before Ellen Johnson left power, the trajectory, it means the direction, the direction of the economy was going south. It was getting worse. It was going, it's like car moving. When, when a car is moving and you apply your brakes, the car is going to what? Move you for a little bit. It's going to progress a little bit before it was stopped. When you are sick and they give you medicine. Because that medicine, it contains chemical. That medicine will make you sicker. It make you a little bit sicker. You'll get worse before you get better. Why am I saying this? If the economy was going bad, it's going to get, in fact, this brother, he just made an analogy with Barack Obama. When Barack Obama came to power in, in 2009, after the, the Republican George Bush uh, uh, government, the economy of Liberia started turning around somewhere around the, uh, the uh, end of 2012. It took about two and a half, three to three years when the economy started turning around. Why people, why, why did, why did people, why people were accusing Barack Obama for not uh, being able to handle the economy? I mean, that's how, that's how the economy works. That is how it is. The economy is not like a world of market where someone in, yes. So where do you stand on the uh, president stepping down? Say that again? Where do you stand on the pr president we are step down campaign? It's actually obvious. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. the, the, well, well, it, it's not, well, someone say it's obvious. It is that well, I'm saying the president should not step down now because it's obvious because I've supported the president. Yes, the president should stay, should step down because he was elected number one by majority of the people. And this is the main reason why I want the president to stay. No, I, I will make it short, I promise. 30 seconds. This is the main reason why I want the president to stay. If the march today and the president steps down, Joe has okay, I step down. And then uh Benina Euro comes to power. No. CDC goes in opposition. Then they say, you know what? We too we will march so that uh, uh, Benin Ayure stepped down. Benin Ayure is gone. Joseph Waka can. Oh, we too will march so Joseph Waka can step down. Then Joseph Waka stepped down. Then Papel Plomo comes to power. Oh, we will march so Papel Plomo. Then what kind of country will have? That's my reason why I said the president you stay. They are setting a bad precedence. That's my reason why. Okay. Thank you, Papel Plomo. Thank you very oh, much. Mr. John. Hold, hold on, hold on, um, because of that. Just a question. I don't want to correct you on something, Mr. Jai, if you can permit me. Okay. Yeah, the brother, the brother made some uh, inflammatory, I would say, inflammatory utterances about people coming in and not understanding uh, the uh, elementary economic team and they come to talk and they need to be in school and all of those things. I think those are things that call for immediate response because, you know. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think these are things that you should be given. Uh, others should be given a chance to respond to. Because after my brother, a uh, uh, man spoke and he made that statement, I felt that uh, the first thing, his statement was unacceptable or beyond being unacceptable. I don't know if he actually understands where GDP is. To say where well, how was the relationship or role to GDP then, and I think he needs to go back to school and understand where GDP is, because. If you can tell anybody that GDP has no relationship with rule or economic growth, then my brother, you need to go back to school and reread your economics. Or and maybe I do, I do. So you tell me, you tell me what's the what's the show me the relationship then? Tell me by how many kilo kilos of rule equals one or two GDP growth. So tell me now, I don't know. And show me the Come study. On, look at like, what, what kind of, what kind of, no, what is, kind of, not, what, what, school year. no, no, listen, we are in school because, because listen, listen to me, listen to me. You can equate GDP to population growth. Okay. That study is done. There's Nobel prize being won, but I, where I'm telling you, there has been no economic model to show the, the number of rules you have. And I gave you the example of Detroit. I gave you the example of, so, so oh, Alex, oh, 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 oh. Alex, let him, but Alex, let him finish. Let him give the uh, the correlation. Yeah, please. Go, go ahead. So I can look it up. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Jai, the first thing we got to understand: GDP is the totality of the economy, right? And okay, the man is not going to give up. To, he's not going to respond to the answer. Hold on, hold on, and, and we, we Alex, our time here. 
Hold on, Alex. You asked me a direct question. So, What's the so coalition? Want, Alex, hold what on. The co so to give you the correlation, I first have to tell you properly to put it in context for you to have a clearer understanding of where I'm coming from. Okay. Because GDP, if I just, oh, just the correlation, that, the, what, what sense does that you make? Have a simple go question. Alex, Alex, go out. My Alex, brother, hold on, hold my on. brother, my brother, I believe in context. Okay, that's how I speak. If you don't believe in context, then I'm sorry for you. Okay, we don't okay, ask you well, I to put anything in context. We're asking you a direct question. What's the correlation between Alex, the number Alex, of rules in a country? Alex, hold on. Go, go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Mr. Jai, yeah. GDP is a monetary uh, measure, right, of all of the, the, the final goods and services in a country. Okay. In a country, when we talk about economic growth, people talk about the agriculture sector, look at a different, different sector that will contribute to that growth. Okay. All of those sectors, even, I don't even want to go to advanced economy, even the no, elementary no, economy, we say, what is going to go to the This man doesn't know what he's talking about. And and this and is and the problem that just we are having. I think mean, you don't know what you're talking about. Because no, if you don't have role in a country, you don't, you know how much the interstate and non interstate interstate highway, the, the, the impact they have on the GDP of America. Are you telling me that the interstate, you know why America uh, undertook the interstate uh, project and stuff like that? You know the contribution of road to GDP growth. How do you move goods and services across if you don't have road? Then you tell me I don't give you a, a, a formula that say, well, how many kilometers of road that will impact GDP first before you say there is a relationship? How do you move goods and services across? How do you move goods and services across if you don't have growth? That you would say growth don't have any relationship with GDP growth. We kind of economics is that are you studying? Wait, are yeah. you want okay. because you said to, 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 to calculate GDP, I should tell you say, oh, two kilometers of road gave you for zero zero percent of the GDP. That's that's that that that's okay. that, 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 that that's been lunatic. Okay, but I'm right. telling you, if we say GDP is the, the, the measure of well, the, the lack of value for final know. goods and services, we know that to move goods and services around, you need roads. Okay. You, need, you need roads. In Liberia, what okay, I so how many roads do you need? Question, okay, so my question, question is this. In Liberia, I come in, my brother, I let you to you, I let you to you, you have to have tolerance, man. Come on, you have to have tolerance. Come on, you see, that's why you see something that's why I don't like to engage with the people that are professional. You see, don't speak about, about this. Listen, okay, don't don't about this. You you know be professional and be tolerant. You I spoke agree. things that, in as much as what you are saying, okay. uh, it's not lunatic to me. I just have restraint. I call the moderator right. attention to what you are saying. Go ahead, go ahead with your point. In Liberia, during the rainy season, let me tell you. In Liberia during the rainy season, majority of our people go to Africa, those in the Southeastern region like in Maryland and stuff, to get most of their goods. The goods are something that is sold during the dry season in Maryland County, for example, or in Sino, where I'm from, for $10 during the rainy season, it, it, it easily goes up to over $20, $25. Okay. All of those things have negative effect in terms of our output. Okay. So there's the relationship I am telling you between roads. And, and, and GDP is GDP measure the total of goods and services. Goods and services, especially uh, goods, are moved with, with, with uh, through so many ways. Which in our case, I would say, road is a major way. Since we don't have train, we don't have uh, ships mm -hmm. and all of those stuff moving up and down. So the relationship of road in, in terms of measurement of GDP is how do we move our goods and services? How somebody, uh, my uncle that playing a cocoa in Dodo can can bring that cocoa to the market and export that cocoa and that cocoa export can be able to contribute to uh, mm -hmm. our, 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 our foreign exchange. Thank, That's thank a, you. Uh, that that thank you. All right, thank you. Alex, before, before you come in, let, let Alex respond to that. Okay, my brother, I'm not upset at you. I really don't understand that, okay? Uh, I'm not saying you're upset. I'm not telling you got to be okay. professional. Well, 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 I'm trying to say here, yeah, yeah, this on. is a debate. Hold this on. is a debate. Okay, I made a statement that rose does not have any correlation to date with GDP growth. If there's one, please show me it. I know you want to factual it because that's what Mr. Joshua is doing and that's what maybe Samuel Tua told you to do or whoever told you or you and whatever. 
Wow. There are many ways you can you can grow your GDP, but building mm -hmm. roads is not one of them. Because if that's the case, I gave you an example. Wow. There are many countries with a lot of roads that have a bankrupt economy, including the one we're in today. So I'm trying to educate you and tell you that not because you want certain things to happen or you like certain things. If you want to, actually, there is a steady and there's a greater coalition between railroads, right? And, and cost opportunity, they're building railroads, they're building roads. So if Mr. We are really want to move goods from the farm to Morovia, he shouldn't be building roads. Number one, you have the rainy season, which is much more challenging. It's more expensive. It takes longer time. America was built on railroads. So the reason why I started this conversation, I said, many Liberians will get emotional and talk, and we don't, we don't think. Mr. Weir needs to get a team of people, maybe a railroad expert in accounting. Uh, I don't know where few you're in. Bring you on the table, bring other people on the table to sit down and talk about how we develop our country rather than people just coming up. Oh, this man is building hospital. How does that hospital <clears throat> reflect on the economy? That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. That's an educated and intellectual discussion. I'm not here to tell you whether I like you, Mr. Weir, or I hate him. What I'm trying to tell him, Number one, he doesn't have an economic plan, okay? That's why every time when there's something happening in the country, they have a knee-jerk re reaction. Like when the currency drop, then Samuel Tua goes and give money to the, to the people on the street, oh yeah, this will fix it, or go and do harmonization. Barack Obama had an economic plan. He had people around him, Larry Summers and all these people. They sat down and they said, this is what we're gonna do. You see the cash for Crunker, where they gave people cars, the, what the old cars in him, they build out the tariff program where they put $700 billion into the banks. That's an economic plan. And what Mr. Weir needs to do, not for himself, for the Liberian people, he needs to get serious and bring real pe people who understand these things and start listening to people who have no expertise in it. Okay. Th th okay. Thank you. Let me, let me go to Mr. Jonah because he, he, he wanted to uh, come in. Jonah? Yeah. I mean, I'm not an uh, economist <laughs> by any stretch of a measure, but uh, there was a uh, few things that I probably wouldn't well, well wanted to chip in. Uh, there is there is something that I kind of noticed a lot of times with regards to most economists or most professional Liberians. A lot of times when they are making uh, uh, probably like a correlation or some comparison we most often use these Western countries as a measurement for Africa. And I think that is just not fair. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I think if you use these Western countries to measure them with, with, with an African country, the disparity will be so wide and it will make the African country look so bad. So, mm -hmm. so if, I, if, if I wanted to, to, to look at Liberia for with regards to Liberia economy, I would probably want to compare them with countries like Sierra Leone, Guinea, and see where they stand. I mean, when you make those kind of a comparison, I think in my, I'm not an economist, but my common sense tells me that that the difference that you will see will be realistic as compared to when you compare like Liberia economy with America economy, because the gap. It's too wide. Okay. The expertise is too wide. So okay, can, I, I ask a, can I ask you a question, Mr. Jonah? I just yeah. want to ask you one question. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you have children? Yes, or I do. Would yeah. you compare your child's performance to the worst child in, a, in your neighborhood or the best child in the school? Um, that is a no and a yes question. Because okay. I can no. tell you, yeah. And and, you know. <laughs> and, and it is very simple because we know that. Children growing up in certain communities perform better than children growing up in other communities. No, that, that's yeah. not what I'm asking. I'm still asking you, you have children. Yeah, I, I have do. children. Yeah. When my child brings his grade home, I'm not going to say because this kid made D, so my child needs to make D. Okay. So I'm not comparing, I, I, I'm not comparing Liberia with America or France or Great Britain. A good comparison would be maybe Liberia and Rwanda. Right. And Rwanda that's went to the same, even worse, more people die in Rwanda than in Liberia. But look right. at where Rwanda is economically. Look at where Rwanda is socially. 
Okay. No, more well, Rwanda, like Rwanda president. Hold on. Well, Rwanda president. Well, in first of all, Rwanda has no challenges. They have no natural resources. It's a landlocked country. Their president, Paul Kagame, does not even have a bachelor's degree. He was a military guy. So he and George, we are on the scene. George, we have more education, more experience, more exposure, more electability than Paul Kagame. Nabiru has more potential, more all in, in every category in, in, in Nigeria. So I will compare, let's compare Liberia now with Rwanda. And let's see economically. How many years? Right, right, right. Now, now, let me. Can, uh, I, can uh, I ask you a quick question? Wait, in there? wait, hold on, hold on. That is a fair com 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 comparison. Mm -hmm. But mind you, Paul, yeah. Paul Kigani, there are things that, he's, that he is doing. The way how he has grip on our country, it's not the way how we have grip on Liberia. Like okay. it's like where it's much more open, much more free than uh uh than Paul T. That that point. Hundred times, hundred times. That's what I always that point. But but let me ask you another question then. Yeah. The Irish Liberian person in uh -huh. Liberia today, the lady who's selling her fish, who wants to send her children to school and get a mm -hmm. good opportunity, just like Mr. We ask children. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is she concerned about? Is she concerned about you know, democracy, or she concerned about the means to put food in her children's mouth. The food? I mean, no, 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 so no. So it goes back to that, the ask, hey, man, that, That's not a fair question. OK, well, you asked a question. Thank you very much. Thank you. you the reason why I say it's not a fair question is okay. because, you see, when you, when you narrow the question like that, or, or somebody can easily say, oh, she's concerned with the food. But no. Okay. let me ask that question to you. Let me ask that question to you. Let me ask that question to you. I don't know where you live. If you live in Liberia, if you live in America, maybe you George, we are brothers. I don't care. But what's the most important? <laughs> I thing live in Minnesota. You? Okay, so in Minnesota, what's the most important thing to you as a person and as a man, perhaps with a family? The most important things to me, my freedom, mm -hmm. my security. Okay. My freedom, my security, and my economic. Oh, so you go back to economic. Okay. Oh, so yeah. jobs. If, okay. So let's let, let, let go back to the term when you just said job. You want to be able to work to pay to feed your family, right? We're all done. Yeah. You're not a man. All right. Right? We all have yeah, a yeah. job. I'm not a man. Do you yeah. think that your, your brothers and your sisters in Liberia that you're telling to wait for five more years? Who don't have a job? Who gotta wait hey, for every hey. morning? Alex, 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 I love, I love that part. It is good. Everybody, like I said, maybe you join late or maybe you are not paying attention. I acknowledge that the current economic situation in Liberia, it is tough. And it's, it, it will be naive for anybody to sit okay, and good. act or ignore it. But my okay. thing here is, my brother, you, 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 look, these things, it takes time. You, you, okay. it, it's not going to change overnight. So, so okay. Mr. Mr. I don't Mr. care what happened. That's why we have to work. I'm saying nobody is saying to change overnight. Let, let yes. me tell you what my positions are. Well, Rwanda did not change overnight. Ghana did not change overnight. America did not change overnight. But guess what? They had incremental improvement in the economy. In the case of Mr. Weir, and this is a fact, I can show you what the GDP was in 2017. It was on a growth of 3%. When he got in power, it was 2 point something percent. What is it today? It's 0.4%. So what I'm because trying to say it is- was, Because okay. it was going down. Because no, it was went. going up. A, it was no, going listen, up. Listen. OK, hold, hold on, guys. Hold on, That's where you are listen. for now. OK. Uh, uh, listen now. Listen, listen, listen. You and I know very listen, well hold now. On. You know, hold on. I'm muting you guys. Okay, go. Yeah, I'm muting you guys. Let me let me let me hear from Mr. Morris Man before I go to my my line again. Mr. 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 Morris, I I, I don't want for us to uh, leave the crush of the argument whether or uh, Mr. We are step down campaign should go ahead or not. I know you are arguing economics and saying that uh, I don't want for us to deviate too much and go into the pros and cons of the We are government because we have people on the line who want to listen to whether we are stepped down or not based on whatever factor. Go ahead, your contribution. And <coughs> Mr. Holtz, and I just I just want to to encourage my, my colleagues on the opposite side to be very professional and 
I think he made some statement that it's not healthy for professional debate. We need, first, we need to do, we need to disabuse our mind from the anger, in the emotions when we discuss sensitive national issues. It is sad that people will come here and you know express anger, you know, when it comes to issues that borders around the survivability of our people. And the we are still down capping it tied to the the economies of the country. So we cannot discuss the the, the step down and I'm talking about the, the economics because the these guys are using and these economic challenges as the 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 springboard to 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 unleash you know that evil intent on the country. For us, we strongly believe that their proposition is unfair. Is un, it, it has no grounds, you know, to survive to survive any intellectual test and. This guy was talking about GDP and rule had no connection because I talked about rule. So let me just speak to that a little bit. Probably you don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does not know. Because if you calculate GDP, you're looking at what, because you're looking at the contribution, what's contribute to the growth. If you're looking at market, we're looking at market, you're looking at two bureau, two important issues in the market, you're looking at seller and you're looking at supplier. The seller, who sell when, it, when he or she does not get goods from supplier? How supplier get the goods to the market to get that seller the potential to what to turn over? Because the more turnover in the market create market value. So if 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 the demand if the demand of the commodity is high and the supply is low, it create economic challenges. Those are elementary economics. You don't have to do that in college. But you want to come here and tell us that we you know we are speaking from behind the house and somebody didn't go to school. I understand? But the market cannot give value when these things that support the market is not there. You talk about electricity. You have to store perishable goods. How do you how, how the seller store perishable goods? So if perishable goods, if electricity is not present to, to store perishable goods, what happens? It devalues the market. Market value drops. So before, if you're looking at market value, what gives value to the market? You're looking at electricity. You're looking at road because you want supplier to able to supply the seller. Okay, we got a point. We got your point. I come in. You, 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 and seller want to store perishable goods and help. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Hold on. Hold on. To me. I think we got the man's listen point. Me. Listen to me. So we should build rules. Listen to me. We got your point. Me. Listen to me. Okay. You cannot okay. calculate the miles of road. To, we to, got to, that to, point. I have to, a to question for you. Let me change. You cannot calculate the miles of road of GDP, but you okay, calculate cool. how do, how the road add value to the numbers. Well, that I, the I, we got the point. Can I ask you a question? For the argument you're not getting. So for like, okay, Mr. Morris, Mr. Man, can I ask you a question? Go I ahead. Have a question. You made your point. We got the point. Okay. What's your area of expertise? Yeah. I have what an do you MBA do in business administration and uh, an MSc in accountancy. MSc in accountancy. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay. So yeah, you're telling me. Huh? No, 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 no. I agree with you. What you're yeah. saying. All right. So that means you know how to balance a book, you know, trial balance, you know, uh, income statement, you know, financial statement. Correct? You think question? question. Okay, I have a question now. Why have a question? I'm waiting. My question is: this. Do you think somebody can walk from on the street? Okay, you spend four years getting an accounting degree, and maybe another two, three years getting an MBA to be able to do your books and to be able to to analyze financial statement. Do you think it's possible for someone who has never went to school for accounting, never went to school for business management, to be able to efficiently do what you're doing? Uh, one of the things that comes with profession is integrity. That, that's not my question. It, my question change. is simple. Let, let me give you a history. Let, let me, my let question is very simple. Do you let think? Me, let me bring you back to, to, what, to where we live. If you, if you read about the reception okay. in America. You, you don't know, have to answer the you, question. Let, I will turn my time with somebody else. It's don't, OK. No, don't value the credential of the person no, but I'm asking you a simple business question. If you was a hiring manager, 
Will you hire somebody? Will you hire somebody to do your books and to run a company's financial statement who does not even have a degree in accounting or any experience in that area? That's the question I ask you. Those are Morris, I, I want you to answer that question. question. No, you can allow me to. to the question. No, don't defeat yourself yet. Speak to the issue. Morris, okay, look, that I got time for this politics. Morris. We here to talk about the issue. You, the if you can't answer Alex, the question, let me move to somebody else. You don't have official information. Alex, to ask me a question, I'll answer your question. You don't have to answer your question. Oh, Alex. my God. Hold on, Alex. OK. Hey, Alex. Okay. You don't reduce a hey, now. Alex, I want to answer that question. Hold on. Okay, please. Let, let, me, respond, let me respond to Alex. Let me okay. respond to Ellis. You have one respond minute. To you have one minute. Please respond to Alex. Let me respond, respond to Ellis. You know, Ellis, when you hire every manager, when you you don't just look at credential as a hiring manager. I, I the HR in my MP. Listen to me. But, but Listen just, to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Just you tell me that you got an HR degree and you tell me Listen don't look me. at me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I did okay. HR as a, as a, as a whole okay. coach. I'm telling you, when right. HR you is hiring at... people, give me a chance. When HR uh -huh. hiring people, they look at several issues, look at several in indicators, they look at several areas. But credential is one of the most important. Mr. Mr. No, Mr. 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 Mr.
whether or not the We Are Step Down campaign you are in favor or not? And if yes, why? Go ahead with your concluding okay. statement. All right, let me conclude real quick. Uh, in 2012, there was a direct headline that said, and I'm reading right now, Bad Rose Bridges who paid $4 trillion from the United States GDP in a decade. $4 trillion in 10 years. That was the, that was the United States. So Roe has okay. direct correlation to the GDP because you have to move goods and services around because GDP has to deal with what? Finish goods and services. In conclusion, can I, can uh, I ask this guess one question? Hold on, because Mr. Mr. Host. Hold on, let you conclude. The president, the president, the president should, I'm concluding, the president should not resign because the article one that people are using saying that the people can petition the government uh, so that they can what? Uh, 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 alter the government. That alteration is not talking about removing the president from power. If the government wants to make a bad decision, you can protest so that the government can alter okay, that decision. And the same article one right. says they should only remove the president through what election. So okay. I want the president to okay. say after the question, Mr. Then Chair. you can vote for another president. Okay. No, I don't want to answer your question. You are rude. Thank you. Bye. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Very thank, much. Thank, Bye. thank you very much. Move on. Okay. Right. Can I? Can I? Can I have the? Sure. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. We are we are almost out of time, so we will be we will be concluding this. So let me let me start with you, all, uh, Mr. Mr. Jonah, for your concluding statement on the topic that we are discussing tonight. All right. For my concluding statement again. I will re-emphasize what I said from the beginning, which is uh, I will go uh, with what the Constitution says. And from my reading of the Constitution, the only way we, you can remove a president are three ways. Like, and I stated them. One, by impeachment, we can have it removed out of death or when he is incapacitated. And as of now, none of those things are happening. So in my own uh, sense and thought is that the president should not be removed because it was sent a bad precedent. And I know how we are in Africa. If someone did something, some, there's, a, there's a high propensity of that same thing to be repeated. And we do not want these things happening time after time. I'm not saying that we are government is good. The government mm -hmm. everybody has a lot of lapses and a lot of things that are wrong, but we cannot have one wrong to correct another wrong. So as of now, let's keep holding him on. To, let's take him as a baby and then take him to the uh, final line, but we should not remove him. That is all I have to say. And thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, Mr. Jai, uh, thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, you know, I really do hope that uh, I will have the opportunity again to probably have a mature, respectful, and uh, tense conversation with uh, any Bali as we discuss the forward march of Liberia. Uh, let me say thank you <laughs> to all of the other uh, 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 guests there. Uh, man, my brother who just spoke and Alex, I, but in closing, I, I don't know much about Alex to be earnest. And uh, I guess when he came on air, he uh, never formally introduced himself. So I don't know much about him, but I uh, saw one or two people say, oh, he, the expert uh, in economics or so. I don't know if he worked in the economic field or what he does, but uh, what I, I'm just taking aback that he said there's no correlation between GDP and rules. That, I, I don't know, I'm going to sleep tonight. And that, that is it's so funny to me, but that's for another time. So, but my position again remains, we got to do what we can do to support our country. If you have dissatisfaction about things, continue to engage the government, exercise your rights. I don't think uh, a step down campaign is in the right direction. It's not in. A, it's not a good spirit uh, or effort for our young democracy. Let us disagree to agree and move Liberia forward. Thank you again, Mr. Ja. Please, in closing, I really want to have the opportunity to come with the numbers and tell people why I am convinced that just we are government is doing well, 
I know I have the numbers here from where George we are started to where we are and where all we participants are, are muted and they can so unmute I pray themselves. That one day you can uh, uh, invite me with whosoever and we can provide these numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this, this is our tradition. We have some. Uh, I'm going to uh, break from the tradition and just give one minute each to my last two callers. 412-808-7937. Your name and where you calling from? Caller? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, hi, how are you? Good. What's your name and where you calling from? So my, my name is Rose Joy and I'm calling from Philly. Okay, Rose, um, welcome. Your question or comment? Um, I mean, it's not a question. I just want to say one or two things. Uh, thanks for the debate. Anyway, great debate. Uh, I like to see Liberians get on each other's skin, you know, because we need to do that. We need to get people to talk. Yeah. But I want to, I think I want to say one thing that we <laughs> Liberians do and it's a it's a continuous thing that we seems not to compare our country with great countries, you know. But we come to this country and get education and go back to our country, but we can't compare our country with this country. I don't understand. But they want to come and learn. They want to go to school, college, university. They want to earn an MBA and stuff. But they don't want to take the same idea that they have learned in classes in the U.S. to Liberia. They want to Liberia less, you know, and take mediocre things there and just do what they want to do there. And I disagree. Okay. For my country, I feel my country deserves the best. It needs to be compared to anywhere in the world because we all are the same. We are not different. Americans are not different. They don't, they don't deserve the best than us. We deserve the best like every one of them, you know. And again, Liberia needs to get on their feet People need to start doing the job, you know. Step down, not step down. It's not going to make Liberia no different. Everybody needs to get on their heels and start working. Thank Forget you. about this politics thing. Forget about this partisan thing. You know, that's where that's why today we are where we are today, because we got this policy thing in our head and parties and this and who got this and who this. But I just want to say, you know, I appreciate you guys. I keep doing a good job, you know, keep talking because I know people are listening and people will learn from this. So have a good night and you guys enjoy your life. Thank you so much, Rose. Let me get my last caller. Caller, your name and where you calling from? Hey, John, you hear me? Okay, that's, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Your name and where you okay, calling from? Okay, this is Eastman. Call this is Eastman calling from Washington DC. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I got the I, I got the tail end of the argument, but I, <laughs> I really appreciate this. You know, um, first of all, uh, like what one caller was saying, a, a precedent. The one of the hallmarks of a stable economy is continuity. Okay, <laughs> we if we don't show continuity, in other words, if we do, we cannot follow the laws that we. Uh, uh, um, support and have a, a, a proper turnover from administration to administration, it doesn't show stability. Yeah. Stability is very important if you if you want to attract the kind of investment we're looking for tomorrow. So um, the only criteria that a president is impeachable, and that's the, only, that's the method we should use. First of all, we should use a method that it should happen through impeachment not any other way. Now, a, person, a president is only impeachable under, certain, uh, under a few circumstances. The Congress, or our, in our case, the uh, House of Legislature, can decide that um, he has, uh, there are certain <laughs> violations that he should be removed, okay? That could be anything within treason, bribery, or other high crimes. The other, the other things are involved are maybe in an indictable crime, or a misdemeanor of some sort that will um, require his impeachment. But to go outside the process is something we do not want to create a precedent for, because that is why we're suffering to today. 
Had we removed the True Week Party through the ballot box, Liberia would have been somewhere else today. So anybody who advocates going outside the normal process is not a friend, and they are circumventing the very laws and constitution we claim to believe in. So definitely I would, would do, I'm against any um, step down because it is, it is going outside the process and it should not even be um, um, listened to at this point. But Mr. Eastman, before you go, but do the people have the right? Because going, going and saying, you come down, do they have the right? Or you were saying they shouldn't exercise that right at all because based on our past experience, it went haywire. <laughs> The, the people, okay, let's understand what the right is. The people have a right to demonstrate, legal demonstration. If it, in other words, they have to be uh, approved, yeah. okay, and then demonstrate it. If there, if there is a legitimate reason for, the, uh, um, for what they find, there are, there are means for uh, um, it to go. One of the, one of the ways is to, to impeachment. The other way is a is a is a is a no like how how other people have done in, in other countries they just don't work. You don't have to go and uh, and and get in the uh, of uh, street and and start um, co causing commotion All right. and, and causing violence. That is not the method we want to go. Okay, gotcha. we want to do it in a in a manner. That we will have continuity, not and remember now, we it's not just a few. That's why we have a, 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 a democracy where people elect. There may be some have their point of view, then there are others that have theirs. Okay, so it, is is the few that will go demonstrate? Is it enough to bring about uh, a change like that? Just because they have voice in their opinion, but it's not enough. The only way to do it, therefore, is through a proper process because there are people on both sides yeah. so let's follow the process thank you that's all i'm saying thank you let me go to you mm -hmm. alex for your for your final thoughts you sure you want to come with me dennis well you know it's a pleasure uh when i saw that nobody was going to take the side of joshua resigning or leaving office i i decided to take that for intellectual reasons now viewers will have to think and that's something that Liberians do not want to do. We believe in certain things that we believe, whether you believe in Jesus, Allah, whatever, give me a reason, give me a logic behind it. And that's what Liberian people don't want to do. You want to grow your economy, tell me how. Don't give me hope. Don't tell me, oh, it'll be okay. Robert Mugabe was president of uh, Zimbabwe for over 30 years, okay? You go around Africa, their president's been there for 20, 30 years. And where are the countries today? So if you're telling me that time equals development, again, that doesn't have any statistical or it doesn't have any empirical proof. We all you come to America to get educated, like last guest said. You shouldn't take your country less. You shouldn't say that you can live in America, get a good job, go to school, send your children to school, get good health care. But when it comes to Liberia, you should drink dirty water. Uh, uh, a deficit mm -hmm. in the public, raise your standard. Raise your standard. Everything that happened in America today, all right, happened because people decided we want better. What's wrong with, you, with Liberia? It's why we just have to take least, the least approach. Liberia was at, in 2016, 1.6% negative growth. In 2017, 2.5%. In 2018, 3.1% today, 0.4%. And then people will look at our numbers and say, oh no, by the way, that I didn't make that number up. I've nobody seen that George Real should have a five, six percent economy. Nobody seen that he should change that bro overnight and give everybody forty thousand dollars job. But when you come from three point one percent to 0.4 percent, maybe you start firing some people, then things will get back to where it needs to get to. And that's the problem in Liberia. We have this patronage. I'm CDC man. I'm Unity Party man. I'm, I'm, I'm True Week Party man. I'm Congo man. There's Gio man or Mano man or Basa man in power. So wherever the numbers is, I have to support that person. I don't support a damn person in Liberia. The only thing I care about is how the people, or me, I want a good life. 
if I can stay in America and work and go, I want the same job in Liberia. And if a president, whether it's George Real or Comey, don't give it, I'm going to criticize you. And so the point here today is I'm glad that we have the conversation, Mr. Weir, I respect you. Where? Weir, I respect you yeah. very much. You told you heard your position, and I'm looking forward to a debate where you just me and you, where you can bring those numbers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anytime, any day, uh, you know, again, I don't come with any degrees or any, that's not important. Listen to what I said. I said, number one, Joshua has to have an economic plan. Show me the economic plan. If you show me it, we can talk. I ask you a simple question. Okay, show me where there's a correlation between the number of roads built in the country to yeah. the growth in the GDP. Go back, send me that document, and I will come here and praise you. That's what I ask. If you ask, so this is an intellectual discussion for me. I don't care. Like I said, I wear George Weah t-shirt. I see tomorrow he wants to play golf, we play golf. But when it comes to the economy, the people who run the economy, they've done a terrible job, and George Weah needs to see that. You can't come from 3.1% to 0.0% and call that good or call that on somebody else. Th thank, thank you, you very you. much for your time. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Yeah, Mr. Ja, first and uh, last, I want to say thank you again for bringing me on this platform. I appreciate and I've been following you. And these are the kind of conversations we, we like to get involved with. But one thing I'd like to encourage and uh, Liberians, both in Liberia and in the diaspora, we, we need to really take our emotions away from the issues. The issues are very critical. You understand? A lot of people, a lot of people have good things to bring to the table because of um, we're not really getting there and they, 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 their views are not getting across, but emotions. So we need to remove the emotions from our argument, remove the emotions from the suggestions we have to, to change the, the dynamic of our country. And uh, this, this my brother is saying that the government does not have an uh, economic plan. The PAP is an economic plan. What's an economic plan? Oh I, don't know, I don't know what people call economic plan. An economic plan is, is, is a document that, 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 that outlines government priority, how to improve the lives of the people. And the PAPD, that document all on the government priorities. And let's give this government chance to what? To implement the PDP. Because, because that on this document, we will what? Do a, a strategic analysis where the government for sure in your own economic documents. The PAPD, but but why the government is uh, uh, implementing the PAPD, and we the citizens that stand the social social contract with this government is creating a uh, distraction, undermining the government effort to ensure that her priorities are intended to, to 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 transform the country. It's not getting the, the support the government needs. Where are we, where are we going? I listen to the last call, you stress a major point. People need to believe in the rules of law. If we think that our government is not working uh, in line with our expectation, there are laws and there are grounds for impeachment. And he talks about continuity, continuity strengthening democracy. In, in, in America, some people don't, some people don't allow that and strong, but the fact that he's the, he is the president. So to support his agenda is a supporting the growth of the country. If you say you want to bring uh, 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 President Weir down, he's not, you're not breaking him down. In the 80s, we said we were breaking those down. Where is those today? Those gone. We destroy our country. The little infrastructure that we had to build on, we destroy everything. If we're going to exercise restraint today, other person, I don't compare like Broadway with, with America. Look at Guinea. Guinea has crashes with secretary. They went through a lot of things, but what? They exercise restraint. And the little things secretary left behind, these guys are building on it tomorrow. Okay. But if you say we we'll, we'll own man, every leader and destroy everything, what you will have to build on? Thank you. You will have nothing. So what, what, what our objective has to declare. We have to be constructive and remove the emotion from the argument because 
the issues is borders around the survivability of our people, then we should be careful because vast majority of our people are illiterate and does not understand how we communicate this message. If it goes to a grand GDP in terms of GDP, don't know. Uh, I don't know about GDP. I disagree so, with the literacy I, <laughs> I know you, you, yes, that's a debate. You have to disagree. Mm -hmm. And I said, for my mother, she here from Riverside County. My late father here from Riverside County. If you go to my mother's house, they tell about GDP. She what all she concerned about what she want to get the full money for tomorrow money. That's what you tell me. So how do we get those things on the table? That should be our priorities. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you so thank much. You again. I want to I want to appreciate all of you for, for coming on this uh, debate. Um, I personally was surprising to me because I've heard a lot of drum beats about uh, the We Are Step Down campaign, but unfortunately, we could not get anyone with the time uh, to come here and debate the issue. So I must thank you guys so much for coming. And so uh, we brought in our, our man Alex to, uh, to, to play the devil's advocate and he did that very well. <laughs> 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 so, he overplayed. <laughs> no, no, John, one question here. All these accountants and NBA people, why they don't come on the business and economic forum? So it's a challenge for all of you. You're doing economics and you're accounting. You should be coming to talk economics and accounting. Forget about the politics for a minute. Where? Let's talk about how we can build industries. And I think the gentleman who called was on the economic forum last week. And he did a wonderful job with the LEC. Where, where, where you got? I'm, I'm just hearing about economic forum. Right. Oh. Uh, every Thank every you. Saturday at 3 p.m. So tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We have the business and economic forum right here on Focus on Liberia. On Focus on okay. Liberia, we, uh, we we strive to educate, elevate, and promote all things. Right. Like so who are your guests so, on tomorrow? So, so uh, if you if you want to uh, be a part of the economic forum, you can contact uh, Alex or you contact me and uh, we, can, we can talk about that. So uh, tomorrow we are talking about, we've been talking about infrastructure development, you know, investment in Liberia, diaspora right. investment. We talk about infrastructure, we talk about uh, uh, LEC. The bonds, we talk about, the diaspora uh, bonds, and all these Right, the diaspora bonds. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about tourism, the tourism the sector as uh, something that we can uh, invest in. Uh, if all goes well, the Minister of Information, Cultural Affairs, and Tourism, Len Eugene Nambwe, is going to is invited, he accepted, and he's going to be part of it, fortunate, uh, hopefully. Is, is going to be there. And we have these uh, finance, business, and economic experts that are there. And p some of them have no accounting or finance background or uh, education, but they have been practicing. And so it's very, very- uh, No politics. No, we are no, no commies. This is how we do Strictly it. Economic. On Friday night is our debate Friday. On Saturday is all economics. Then on Sunday, we're going to come up with uh, we have children on the scene on African unity and development. We're going to be speaking with the queen of the AU tomorrow at six. Uh, that's uh, Maureen Luquasa. We're going to be Luquisa. We're going to be speaking with her tomorrow. And then also pro retired professor Neil Holmes. He's a retired you know, African-American professor. So he's going to talk to us about the gap between African immigrants and, Afri and uh, African-Americans and how we can bridge that gap. He will give us a long history of the relationship of uh, Liberia with African immigrants here, and this is going to be fun. So that's what we do here. I want to appreciate you all. Uh, from what I see and from the call, we see that uh, a lot of people are against the uh, the We Are Step Down campaign. They want this to be. They are using our past experience with uh, campaigns of those nature, which sometimes lead to chaos. They want this transition to be orderly because uh, this was the first time that uh, there was a peaceful handover of power from one elected president to the other. So most people from what we've seen so far tonight want this to continue. And uh, some, this is the only camp, I think this is, uh, this is the only issue that, if, that has split the opposition because some of the opposition, even though they don't support the current administration, but they believe that <laughs> A step down campaign is not only untimely, but it's going to, it's not good for the country, and the, the country is going to, it's going to cause chaos. 
So that's one thing that they agreed on. Prior to coming here, people have challenged why we had to do this because um, it has no basis. So we didn't talk about it, but we said, no, we have to talk. Yes, before we were not talking, okay? This time, whatever the issue is, there should be no elephant in the room. Let's come here and debate in a civil manner. Again, I want to thank you all. Keep in touch, we want to have you back. And I want to, again, on behalf of all of us here at Focus on Liberia, we want to say thank you so much. Good night and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you.